Hello everyone, I am Juliet and you are joining me here today at Spoilt Russian Beads where I am going to show you how to make this lovely peacock tail um, pendant that I'm wearing today. It was designed for a lady, um, for us by a lady called Mandy Wesson who works for us here at Spoilt Russian Beads. Many of you will have met Mandy on our courses and during your time in the shop. She makes the most beautiful jewellery and we think she's a very clever lady. This pendant uses a uh, Swarovski Rivoli and then dagger beads to create this gorgeous peacock type effect which is a really lovely and I've got a few other colorways that I can show you here so let me just bring these up to the camera so you guys can see they are just so pretty and super duper sparkly and I'm going to be using some etched dagger beads to make my pendant today so it really will look just like a peacock's tail. Um, so uh, before I go I will say to you do hit that subscribe button and subscribe to our channel so that you are the very first person to hear about our new videos and our offers and our new arrivals. Um, and do head over to our website where you will be able to download the free pattern from our website and purchase everything that you need to make yourself one of these lovely pendants. Our website address is www.spoiltrottenbeads.co.uk. Okay, I think that's everything I need to say. Um, and I'm now going to talk you through the beads that you'll need to make yourself one of these peacock tail pendants. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is talk you through everything that you will need to make one of these beautiful peacock tail pendants. So you're going to need a 14 millimeter Swarovski Crystal Rivoli and I'm using this Army Green Delight colorway here which doesn't look very green at all um, but um, more purpley but that's what Swarovski have chosen to call the color so we'll go with that. Um, I'm going to be using these gorgeous etched dagger beads here and one strand um, of dagger beads from our website is more than enough. Then you'll need some size 11 Delica beads, some size 15 seed beads and some size 11, um, size 11 seed beads. So those are 11 Delicas, 15 seed beads and 11 seed beads. And you finally, you will need some lovely, tiny, weeny little three millimeter Swarovski crystal um, bicone beads as well. And of course you will need some beading thread and I'm going to be using Dura thread today in my video. Um, I'm going to be using black Dura thread because that will make my thread show up really nicely for you um, when I make my video. So the first thing that we need to do is to bezel this Rivoli or capture this Rivoli um, using the, um, the Delica beads. So what I've done is I've threaded my size 10 beading needle up with the longest length of Dura thread that I'm happy working with because you will need to add on some more thread as you go. And then you need to pick up a total of 36 of your size 11 Delica beads. So I'm gonna pick up 36 size 11s and then I'm gonna come back to you when I have checked that I've got 36 size 11 Delica beads picked up and taken down towards the tail of my thread there. So I have picked up 36 of my um, Delica beads here. And what I'm gonna do now, I've taken them down towards the tail of my thread. There's my tail of my thread. And what I'm gonna do is pass through all 36 of them again. And it is really important that you make sure that you have got exactly 36 Delicas on because you're gonna be creating a POT um, bezel um, for your um, for your beautiful um, Rivoli stone, and if you have um, if you have not got thirty six on there, then it is not going to work. So by passing them through, passing through them all again, I've created a circle um, like that. And what I'm going to do now is just pass back through the first four at the beginning of that circle, and then I'm going to pull it tight there. So, and there's my circle. And what we're going to do now is, is add in a row of POT. So my um, thread is exiting from this Delica here. So I'm going to pick up another Delica bead, skip over the next Delica bead and then go through the next one. It will look like that. 
I'm going to repeat that all the way around the circle, picking up a Delica, missing out the next one in the circle and going through the following one. Pull it tight. This is called peyote stitch if you've not done this before. It's going to continue round the circle, always picking a bead up, missing out the next one and going through the next one. And it will look like that. So I'm going to continue around my circle now um, and come back to you when I get to the end. Um, and I will show you how to step up to the, your next row um, and um, how to continue creating your peyote bezel. So I've got to the end and I'm just about to add on my last bead. So I picked up my last bead and I'm going through that bead and now you can see I've create, completed that row of peyote and I'm now going to step up, it's called stepping up, step up through the empty um, bead there and I'm now ready to start to close off this bezel by adding in a row of size 15s. So I'm picking up a small size 15 seed bead and I'm going to go through the next up bead. That's I'm calling these the ones that stick out. I call them up beads when I do peyote. Um, so it's the same as what we did before because you're coming out of a bead, picking up a bead, missing out the next one and going through the next one. But it's easier now because those beads that you need to go through are sticking up. Um, and as you do this, you'll pull tight and you'll find your um, bail will begin to, um, bezel will begin to pinch in because the size 15 beads are smaller than the Delica beads that you have used um, so far. So I'm just going to keep going and once again, I'm going to keep adding in my row of um, peyote size 15s and come back to you when I get to the end of this row. So I've got to the end of this row now. I've just picked up my last size 15 and I'm going to go through the next Delica bead and the first size 15 in this row. And I'm going to pull it all tight and then I'm going to let you guys take a look at it. And you'll see it's kind of beginning to curve a little bit there. And what we're going to do now is add another row of size 15s. So I'm exiting from this size 15 I'm going to pick up another size 15 and go through the next size 15 in the pattern and this is when it will really begin to sort of pinch together um, and create that lovely that lovely bezel that we want just going through the size 15s though so um, it will look like this and I'm just going to continue beading um, and then again, I'm going to come back to you when I get to the end of this row and show you what to do next. Okay, so I have reached the end of this row. I've picked up my last size 15 and I am going to go through the next size 15 in the, in that, in the row below and through the first size 15 that I picked up in this row and pull tight. And you can see it's really kind of beginning to cup now. Now at this stage, if you want to, you can leave your bezel like this and pop it face down and pop your Rivoli face down into that bezel. But I want to add a little decorative um, edge, um, well, inner to my lovely, um, to my lovely um, bezel. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So to do that, I'm gonna pick up a size 15 and then go through the next size 15 in my pattern. And you see it's, you've got this little design here. Um, it's starting to sort of sit up a little bit. And then I'm gonna go through the next two size 15s. And do that again, add a size 15. Go through the next up bead. My thread's getting caught around the edge of my bezel there. And then sew through the next two size 15s. And my thread's got caught around my bead. There we go. And I'll let you guys see that. You can see you end up with this kind of 
just it starts to sort of point up like little star shape um, around that um, lovely bezel there. So I'm going to continue around my bezel. So I'm effectively adding in a size 15 every other up bead. And that's what's creating that little star design there. Sort of it will fit, it will look a little bit like a star shape when my Rivoli is in this bezel. So then I now need to stitch down through the next two beads. And add in my next size 15. So I am going to come back to you when I've gone all the way around my um, bezel and done that. And I'm going to show you how to add in the Rivoli and how to begin to, to close up the back of this lovely peyote beaded bezel here. Okay, so I have got to the end of this row and created that decorative star. Oh, there's a siren going past. Sorry, everybody. Um, so I have created that decorative star-like inner to my, to my bezel. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna pop my bezel down onto my bead mat and there's my beautiful Rivoli and I'm gonna pop it face down into that bezel. And um, if you like, you're like me and you bead really tight, it might be a bit of a wriggle to get it in there, but don't worry, it will go in. There we go. There's my Rivoli and if I turn it over, it looks so pretty already, I'm loving it. Um, so there's my Rivoli in my bezel. My thread is coming out of this size 15 here. And what I'm gonna do is stitch through the delicas onto the, so I get through to the other side of my bezel, because what we need to do now is close up the back of that bezel using those dinky little size 15 seed beads. So there I am now, I'm through to the back of my bezel and coming out of one of my delicas and I'm gonna pick up a size 15 and go through the next delica in that row. And I'm gonna add two rows of peyote size 15s um, and that will close up the back. So once more, I'm gonna continue around my piece and um, come back to you when I've got to the end of this row and um, show you how to step up to the next row and then we'll have our lovely sparkly Swarovski Crystal Rivoli securely captured and we'll be able to begin embellishing it with those dagger beads and those crystals. So there we are, I've got to the end of this row. I've picked up my last size 15. I'm gonna go through that Delica and through that first size 15 that I added in this step. Says she, and now she can't get her needle through. There we go. There we are, and pull tight. And now we just need to add in one more row of size 15s. So I'm gonna pick up a 15 and go through the next 15 in this row. And I'm gonna go all the way around, just like I did before, picking up those 15s, going through the next 15 and pulling it tight and that will just capture that Rivoli and make sure that it's all nice and secure in this beautiful POT beaded bezel that we have made. So I'm gonna come back to you when I have finished this step. So I've got to the end of this row now. I've picked up my last size 15 and I'm gonna go through the next 15 and step up through the first 15 in this row. And if I wanted to now at this stage, I could also do that pretty star effect on the back of my of, of my um, Rivoli, but I'm not gonna bother because I, I don't think anyone's gonna look at the back of this one because the front is so beautiful and sparkly. So instead, I'm gonna move on to the next stage and I'm stitching through my work so that I'm gonna be exiting one of the Delica beads right in the middle, the middle of that bezel. And what we're going to do now is pick up a size 11 seed bead and pop a size 11 seed bead in between all of the Delica beads in that middle row. So I'm just picking up a size 11 and going through the next Delica bead 
in that middle row there and it will look like that. So I'm going to go all the way around my piece and I'm going to come back to you when I've done that. And then we'll begin to start to um, add on our um, on our dagger beads, I believe. So uh, that's when it all starts to get exciting. Now, I've been doing too much talking, and look, I picked up two of my um, two of my um, size eleven. So I'm just going to need to remove my needle um, and um, take one of those extra beads off. So I'm just going to continue adding in those size 11s around the outside of my piece and I'm going to come back to you when I've done that and I will show you how to um, add in those beautiful dagger beads. There. Okay, so I've got to the end of the row and I'm just going to add on my last size 11 bead there. And when I do this, I'm going to step up through the first size 11 bead that I added in this row. So the first one of those purple beads that are sticking out from the edge of my piece there. So I'm stepping up through that bead. And let you see how sparkly and pretty it's looking. And now we're going to add in our dagger beads in between our size 11 seed beads. So I'm coming out of size 11. I'm going to pick up a dagger and go through the next size 11. And untwist my thread and pull it tight. Now, the, the daggers will sort of fall down like that at this stage, don't worry, because later on we're gonna stiffen the whole piece up with um, some size 15 seed beads again, which will make a big difference and, and make sure that those daggers sit where you want them to. So I'm gonna add on a total of seven daggers right now. Um, and I'm gonna come back to you when I've added all seven of those dagger beads on and show you what to do next. Okay, so that's all seven of my daggers added on. I'm now going to continue around the rest of my Rivoli there by picking up three size, whoops, three size 15. So I've got three size 15 seed beads there. I'm coming out of a size 11 and I'm going to go through the next size 11. And what we want to do is to just wiggle those beads so that they sit in that pretty little pico pattern like that, with the, that little kind of, it's almost like a little triangle. So we're going to continue around doing that all the way around now. So I'm picking up three size 15s, going through the next size 11 and they should just sit like that naturally but if they don't then you might just need to give them a bit of a helping hand um, but you're going to go all the way around your piece doing that and see these ones don't want to sit quite right so I'll just give them a little wiggle and they'll uh, sit nicely in place like that so continue all the way around your piece um, until you get to the other okay, side so I've gone all the way around and added in that little pico edge there of um, size 15 seed beads we're going to use those later on to attach our sparkly three mil crystals and I'm coming out of this size 11 seed bead here um, and this is my front of my piece. I'm going to fit, flip it over to the back now and I'm going to stitch through my work and so that I am going to be exiting from one of these delicate beads on the back of my piece here. So if, like me, you bead very tight, you might find that at this stage you need to switch down to a smaller needle. Um, so if you have any difficulty getting through the beads at this stage, then uh, then do switch down to a smaller needle. But it looks like I'm gonna be okay right now with my size 10 needle. So there we go, pull that into place. I'm now exiting from one of the Delica beads on the back of my piece. And I'm now gonna repeat what we did before and add in a size 11 Delica bead, in, sorry, size 11 seed bead in between each of those Delica beads there. So I'm going to go all the way around, adding in a size 11 seed bead on the back of my piece in between 
each of the, the Delica beads on the back of that bezel there. So I'm going to come back to you when I have done that um, and show you how to continue adding more of the lovely um, the lovely dagger beads and how to um, sort of stiffen it all up so that they all sit nice and, uh, and proud on your beautiful pendant there. Okay, so I've gone all the way around and I've added in those size 11s. I'm still on the back of my piece now and I'm exiting from this Delica right here. And what I'm going to do is I want to switch directions. So I'm going to stitch through the size 15s on the back, just the size 15s. There we are. My needle keeps trying to go through that size 11. I might just let it and then go back through it again. That might be easier. There we go. You didn't see that, there we are. Back through those 15s a couple of times and I'm gonna show you why in a minute because we're gonna add on our next row of, um, of our dagger beads and I wanna just get to the right spot so that I can do that. So I'm just eyeballing it now, I'm thinking where do I wanna be? Yeah, I'm just gonna go through them all one more time. So just through another couple of size 15s There we are. And I'm now going to switch direction by going through one of those size 11s that I added in my last row. And once more, I'm going to add in some of my daggers. So I'm going to pick up a dagger, go through the next size 11, pick up a dagger, go through the next size 11. And we're adding our second row, our lower row of daggers, and these will sit below that first row, so we're working on the back of our piece. So I'm just gonna continue adding in these daggers and I think I'm gonna add a total of 10 onto the back of my piece here. But you can experiment and have some fun sort of playing with how many daggers you want to use in your piece. And if you want to, you can take the daggers all the way around, um, all the way around the pendant so it looks more like a sunburst. It's, it's really entirely up to you. So I'm gonna, just continue adding in those dagger beads. So I've added in my 10 daggers on the back of my piece here, and I'm exiting from one of my size 11s, and I'm gonna do exactly the same that we did on the other side of the piece. Pick up three size 15s, go through the next size 11 in the piece so that you get that little pico shape, and if it doesn't form straight away, then just give it a little bit of a helping hand, keep your tension tight and just fidget those beads into place so that they sit nicely like that. Um, so I'm just going to continue round adding in those size 15s into that pico shape there. Just giving them a helping hand if I need to um, and then I'm going to come back to you and show you how to add your crystals to your piece and how to create a little um, a little bail so that you can hang your piece from a chain but also talk to you about alternative options as well that you can use to to hang your piece as well. Okay, so I've added my Pico um, edge here and I've um, stepped up and I'm coming out of the dagger, um, one of the daggers on the back of my piece. And at this stage, you can either just leave your daggers like that because um, I'm gonna wear my pendants kind of this way up. And the fact that my daggers move a little bit isn't a problem for me. But if you want to stiffen the whole thing up, what you can do is go along and add in another size 11 in between each of the daggers along the back of your piece and that will have the effect of stiffening the whole piece up you see so i've added another size 11 so now coming out of this dagger picked up another size 11 and i'm going to go through the next dagger and you can continue around doing that and that's gonna just stiffen the whole thing up a little bit so as i've started i think i shall finish off and uh, doing that as well and and finally i will then come back and show you guys how to add in the beautiful sparkly swarovski crystals to your piece so i've added in my extra size 11s there and if i just zoom in then you guys can see 
those sitting there in between all of my lovely dagger beads. So I'll zoom back out. And um, I am now going to um, work through so that I'm going to be, I'm going to stitch through my work. I'm exiting from the dagger bead here. I'm going to stitch through a size 11 and then up through the first two size 15s on the back of my piece. And this is where the crystals come in. So I'm going to pick up a three mil crystal and go through the next middle size 15. And if I just zoom in again, you guys can see where that is sitting. Zoom back out. There we go. Um, and I'm going to continue along here, adding in those lovely sparkly three millimeter crystals all along um, the back of the piece here. And then we're going to switch over to the front and we're going to do that at the front. And at that stage, we'll be nearly done and we just need to create a little loop so that we can attach our beautiful peacock tail pendant to a chain or add it to a necklace. But I will at that stage just show you another option, something that Mandy Wesson came up with, which is a really nice alternative idea so i will show you that in just a moment so there we are that's my last crystal on on the back of my piece so now i need to move to adding those crystals there on the front when i'm exiting from a size 15 so i'm going to stitch down through the next 15 the next 15 on my on the back here and then we're just going to need to wiggle our way forward onto the front of our piece. Uh, so that's through that 15. I've got my tail of thread caught around my dagger. It's no good. And then we're turning my piece over so I can see where I need to go. And so I'm going to stitch through the size 11 on the front of my piece. And then up through the first two size 15s there in that first little pico and again my pesky thread's got itself caught there we go and once more i'm just going to add in those three mil crystals just going through the i'm just going through the points of the pico so it's just the points the the middle size 15s which form the points of the pico that's where you attach your three mil crystals so I'm going to continue adding in these crystals, come back to you when I have done that there. So I've added in my crystals now and I've just chosen to add six crystals onto the top of my piece here, but you could take the crystals further down the sides if you want to. It's entirely up to you. You can make it as sparkly as you want, but I'm just going to stick with those six. I'm exiting from a 15. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stitch down through um, and pop out, if I can, um, on the other side of my piece. I'm going to move through to the back. That's what I'm trying to do here, but I'm getting my thread caught. There we are. So I'm going to go through one of those lower size 11s. And that now allows me just to stitch through to the back of my piece um, because what I want to do now is create a little um, a little loop that we can use to string this beautiful pendant onto a chain. So um, I'm just stitching now through the size, size 15s and the crystals and I'm going to come out on the middle crystal bead on the the back of my piece and then we're going to make a little loop of size 15 seed beads so there we go um let me um just see where you are where i am there there you go so if i just zoom in you can see i'm exiting from that middle crystal there and that's where i'm going to add that that little loop um like this 
um, little loop of size 15s, which will allow me to string a piece. But before I do, let me just bring something else into shot because this is the back of one of Mandy Wesson's pieces. And you'll see what she's done is, if I run my needle under there, is she's created these little loops of, of size 15 seed beads, which sit on the back of her piece, which means that if I pass my needle through them, you can see how you can hang your piece that way with kind of like an invisible veil. Um, so that's just another option. You can just create a little loop of, um, of your size 15s just by hopping across from um, one of your um, size 11s um, up to the top size 11. And, and back again and just reinforce that a few times and then you've got that handy little kind of hidden bale at the back of your piece. But um, I'm just gonna make a little simple loop on mine. So I'm exiting from this crystal and I'm gonna pick up a total of, I think I'm gonna pick up nine of my size, um, five, nine of my size, um, my size uh, 15s, that's what I'm trying to say get the words out Juliet and then go back through back through that crystal bead again and there's my little loop um so um I'll just take the zoom off because that's probably really close for you um and then I'm just going to um reinforce all of that just by stitching through all of those beads one more time There we go. Um, and then all that will remain really for, is for me to um, finish off my thread um, just by stitching through a few beads. And um, I'm gonna stitch through um, a size 15 and then through a crystal. And because I'm using, because I'm using Dura thread, even though I've used all these crystals and these delicas, and you can see my thread is still intact and um, performing really well. I haven't actually added any more thread on with my piece. And I'm just tying some half hitch knots and go through the next crystal, tie another half hitch knot. Oh dear, there we go. Through the next 15. And crystal, and I'm gonna do that one more time because I like to be nice and secure. My last half hitch knot there. Pull that knot inside the next couple of beads. And then I can um, trim off my tail of thread and my beautiful peacock tail, which this one really does look like a peacock tail, um, pendant will be ready to wear. So I've shown you um, the alternative ways of, um, of finishing off your pieces there um, with the um, either the little loop ba um, bail like I've created here um, or um, Becky has created on um, her lovely etched one here or you can make that little hidden um, bail on the back of your piece just by um, hopping across um, between your size 11 beads there. So do head over to our website and download the pattern. Have fun playing with this design um, and you can see the beautiful colourways that you can make it in. It's, um, it really is gorgeous. Um, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Just hit that subscribe button and then we will see you again next time. Thank you guys. Bye bye.